Hello and welcome. My name is Sean Lenhart, and this is Savoyards Teach, a theatrical arts education initiative from the Pittsburgh Savoyards. This is part two of a two-part masterclass designed to explore the elements of acting. Joining me is Savoyard alum and my good friend, Sally Denmead. Sally, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great, doing great. So uh, the first part of the class was a discussion about the text and how to gain as much information and inspiration for the performance as we can. The second part will be the performance where we utilize the text to create an honest portrayal of the character. But first, Sally, uh, in your experience as an actor, do you have a particular approach or acting technique that you like to use? I like to uh, find out who I am first in this universe that is this play. And to do that, I start by reading the play. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, that should give you most of what you need. Uh, to find out who you are. Um, you may have to go to some historical sources, especially if this is a play set in a real place and time and has to do with real people. I always find uh, historical sources really helpful in that. Um, but really, a lot. I think about 90% of what we need is right there in the text. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a big fan of like if if it's a good play, if it's a good text, then even if you give a terrible performance, it's still going to be a C or a B. Whereas yeah. if you're working with bad material, no matter how fantastically you act it, eh, C or a B. That's, that's about as good as it can be. The text is really the yeah. most crucial aspect. Um, so I guess, uh, are you familiar with terms then when it comes to like uh, Stanislavski or method or things like that or what have you? Yeah, I mean, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't stand up in front of the class and uh, tell you what those are, but I, I know I've used techniques like that, things like, um, things like, things like substitution, taking oh, something sure. from, from your life and making it uh, uh, as close to the character as possible. What I do like to do, especially if I'm playing someone who is not quote unquote like me, uh, I like to make a list of, on one side, similarities, and on the other side, differences. Uh -huh. And similarities, sure, those things are easy to play, but those differences, maybe you're playing a homicidal maniac. <laughs> <laughs> but you can draw from times in your life where you were just hopping mad and could have killed somebody, you know. Uh, so it's, these are, these are the, the ways we get closer to the character uh, as being someone who is not really as alien from ourselves as we might have thought Sure, sure. When we, when we first read it. Yeah, you absolutely always have to be able to sympathize with your character. You know, uh, the, the, the easiest way to do it, say, if you're playing a villain or something, is to say like, well, from my point of view, they can't be a bad guy. I gotta find right. a way to relate to this person and to get behind their goals. Even if I don't agree with their goals myself, I gotta find a way to play those. So if you're just playing someone different than yourself, that absolutely makes sense. I like the idea of a list, the pros and cons, that's fun. <laughs> the, uh, the substitution, I believe that's, uh, uh, I, I heard about that from Uta Hagen, uh, from, yeah, from one of her, her, that was like, her online method. workshop things. So, oh yeah, substitution's fun. And then there's, uh, uh, the sort of as if method that David Mamet used, David mm -hmm. Mamet and um, William Mer Macy. It's, it's yeah. not what am I, uh, who, let me see if I can say this as succinctly as possible. It isn't, here is, here's the character, here's myself. So you're not, you know, what would I do as the character but myself at the same time? So if I was this character, what would I do? Because mm -hmm. we can't really become the character. We're still ourselves. We are creating the illusion of that character, but we have to be true to the truth of that character. So we, we kind of go triangulate it by saying, what would I do if 
I was this character and had to say or do this this thing, be in this situation. So it's yeah, it's a really interesting way to get behind the eyes of that character. Absolutely. Yeah, what you're talking about is uh, practical aesthetics, and that's that's my yeah. personal favorite at the moment. And uh, the the phrase of uh, invent nothing, deny nothing. So you're not going to conjure up any particular feelings, but you're also not going to deny how you are reacting in the moment. Um, and as you're saying, it's about how you would honestly react. So it's about performing actions. It's about playing verbs, which is everything we talked about yesterday uh, right. when it came to uh, the beats. So really, uh, we'll pursue along those lines about just how to play the beats and how to play the verbs. Um, and no matter what style you might find uh, that you relate to best, whatever resonates with you best as an actor, whatever works, works. Go ahead and do it. But uh, at the end of the day, you still have to perform action. So that's totally what we're going to focus on today. So then, uh, we are working with uh, the Mikado, with the character of Katasha in Act 2. So to get started, uh, I thought uh, just to speak the text again. Don't worry about acting. Don't worry about performance. Just let it kind of roll out of you as just regular words, regular speech. We'll see what happens. Mercy. Had you mercy on him? See here, you. You have slain my love. He did not love me, but he would have loved me in time. I am an acquired taste. Only the educated palate can appreciate me. I was educating his palate when he left me. Well, he is dead, and where shall I find another? It takes years to train a man to love me. Am I to go through the weary round again and at the same time implore mercy for you who have robbed me of my prey, I mean my pupil, just at the moment his education was at the point of completion? Oh, where shall I find another? Fantastic. And I definitely always find uh, when first approaching anything or saying it out loud, it's always best not to, not to try to act on top of it, not to paint it over with something we'd call acting, basically. It's always good to start from a, a more natural place. So that was lovely. Um, so I think uh, it's always important when doing this, there's many little steps, there's many ways to approach it. But I think to start is always to ask, what was in the moment before? What happened directly beforehand to instigate this response, the reason why you're speaking? Well, in, in this case, I'm already on stage, but what happened in the moment before was I was having a private moment where I was, uh, I was letting the grief of uh, the, the um, news that my lover is dead, has been killed, uh, wash over me, and I am uh, putting that in context of my life, and I'm saying, my lover is dead. Why, why am I still alive? What use is there in going on living, and I'll just have to go on living with this pain? So she, this is a very private moment. It's a, um, she's all by herself on the stage. She has just sung this um this very affecting aria and uh and then uh she uh, sees or she is hailed by uh coco who um wants to ask her for a really big favor uh -huh. yeah it's it's interesting the song she's singing the last lines of it being uh come tell me why when hope is gone dost thou stay on may not a cheated maiden die so she's she's in a very vulnerable position, and oh yeah, oh yeah, you know, she's actually despairing. She actually is is she's such a tough character. We always see her as being very aggressive, very almost violent, and so to see this almost tender moment with her, and then an interruption. Here comes the guy who is the cause of all of this grief. Right, right, mm -hmm. and if we if we want to look at the moment before the moment before, uh huh, uh huh. Where has she come from? Why is she on the stage all by herself right now? Where's Absolutely. everybody else? Mm -hmm. um, and I think, uh, well, we know that she, she says to Coco, you know, your vengeance is, is uh, vengeance pursues. She says, vengeance is after you uh, because they are heating the cauldron. Now, <laughs> how does she know they are heating the cauldron? Because she was there, okay? She was there. She was there. She was there when the Mikado gave the orders 
and he probably told her, hey, you go supervise. And so she's probably there with the, with the deep fry thermometer, you know, making sure that that boiling oil or melted lead or whatever it is, is the right temperature. So there's, there's been a whole frenzy of activity and adrenaline and anger and rage that she is, has brought on stage with her but now she finds herself alone and can succumb for at least a few minutes to her very deep grief. So that's, that's kind of where she is when, when she is, encounters this other person on stage. Yeah, it's, uh, and it's, it's interesting that you're saying the moment before, the moment before. There is, there is always a moment before. It's the very beginning of the play, the curtain comes up, you walk on stage, literally nothing has happened but you're coming from somewhere. You're entering for some reason. You're, you're being pursued by some bear, you know. This, these yeah. things always happen. <laughs> yeah, you don't, come, you don't just come on stage because the playwright told you to come on stage or the director told you to come on stage. You come on for a reason and you have to know what that is as the character. Which I think supports the idea that all acting is reacting. Yeah. So then uh, let's go through uh, just a little bit. Let's play some beats, basically. So let's, let's have fun with this. Uh, just this first bit, uh, mercy, had you mercy on him, beat, see you here. Let's just see what happens. Mercy, had you mercy on him, see here you, you have slain my love. Fantastic, fantastic. So right now we've got, you're directly asking this question. You're, you're, it feels like the first moment you're kind of cornering him. And then the, uh, see you here. I'm going to keep doing that. See, see here you. you. Uh-oh, I'm going to start doing it. <laughs> uh, either, either way, it'll be fine. Um, right now, I guess that feels more like uh, you're going to lecture him. You know, you've cornered him, and now you're going to lecture him. Uh, uh, if I were just to throw out some, some uh, verbs, I guess. So let's... Let's try that then. Let's, let's double down on that and see what that looks like. Okay. Mercy. Had you mercy on him? See here, you. You have slain my love. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, so let's, let's just, for the fun of it, let's change that middle beat. So you've gone from, you've cornered him. It's effective, it's a lot of fun. What if, uh, what if you plead with him and see where that leads, see what happens. You've cornered him and now instead of laying into him, you're actually going to try to draw something from him. Okay. Mercy, had you mercy on him? See here you, you have slain my love. Aha, aha. How's that feel? It's it's very different. Uh -huh. uh, it, it feels, um, yeah, like you said, like she's trying to draw him closer to her and um, use, use a little bit of vulnerability to get his attention instead of just slamming into him with anger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does it still feel, uh, I mean, maybe you only did it one time, we can do it more suddenly, but does it feel natural? Does it feel like something that you can do honestly? Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, if you, if you decide that um, you, can, you can get closer with uh, sugar than you can with vinegar, you know, uh -huh. it's, uh, it, 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 it'll work either way, as long as you just kind of go for it. Sure. Let's, let's, let's go for it again. Same thing. Try that out. See, see what happens. Mercy. Had you mercy on him? See here, you. You have slain my love. Aha. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So that was fun because now it, it, it kind of naturally shifted uh, a little in the reverse that it was almost pleading at the beginning and then such an accusation. See here, you. You have slain my love. All of a sudden, it's, you know, you're uh, you could almost argue you're stabbing him at that point. Yeah, you're like, you are, no, you're, this is what you did. You're calling him out, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or, or just putting, you know, just putting it in the simplest terms possible that uh -huh. he has killed the guy I loved. I mean, hello. Five words. That's yeah. That's the whole thing. 
cool. So let's let's try that then. We'll start pleading and then go into uh, 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 pl uh, making it very plain. Try that. Mercy, had you mercy on him? See here, you. You have slain my love. Fantastic, fantastic. How does that feel? It feels really interesting. I just, wow. I just love doing this. I, yeah. um, I, I really do make it point when I um, am learning uh, to switch it up, to make it different every time. Uh, sometimes it's just subtle differences, and sometimes you really want to emphasize a certain thing on a certain line, uh, and get, or get to a certain place by a certain point in the monologue, but um, it really is fun to just see where the inflection goes, where the, uh, where the intention goes, oh, yeah. and not, not, uh, not be rigid about it. I think... Uh... Uh, I would definitely agree. And it's important to, it's easy to look at the story and to see some peaks and valleys and to say, oh, this must be a very emotional moment. And it's easy to decide, well, I'd better become very emotional here. I'd better make this very, uh, in a very important moment. But sometimes when we're just in it and we're reacting naturally, and even as we did it now, we tried one set of beats and it was successful, but then we saw, you know, this kind of feels like this set of beats. And we tried that and said, ooh, you know what actually works even better. So there are no bad choices. There are no wrong choices. There are only stronger choices. And so suddenly a moment that uh, was a preconception of saying, this is such an angry bit, suddenly may resonate so much stronger if it becomes something different. And what I love about acting is that theoretically that can happen differently every night. Every night, Coco coming in and interrupting you may feel different. And so if you accept that, and sometimes you go right at them, and sometimes you draw them to you, and sometimes you try to escape, whatever it is, as we've seen, you can do any of it honestly, because you're just playing a verb. So you have this wonderful opportunity to make every performance live and honest every time. Make it interesting um, for you. I mean, there are people who do, you know, eight shows a week for mm -hmm. months at a time. How do they keep from getting, you know, just kind of stagnant or even bored in that? And this is, this is how you do it. You make it new for you every time. The, the important thing is to try to find the strongest choices that you can. Yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. And hopefully you've got someone who's equally as into experimenting as you are, because, yeah, it can yeah. be it can be scary sometimes if you're not used to that or not used to that from your scene partner. So I hope that's where rehearsing comes in and really loving digging in and experimenting. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's always great when we've got the luxury of time to to do that. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, having uh, a scene partner and a director that you can react to, that will give you a response and something that you gotta to deal with. That's that's always the dream. Definitely. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so we can jump to punctuation a little bit. We'll, we'll kind of skip around the speech just a little bit, but uh, just some basic examples of stuff that I think uh, a lot of people take for granted. And so it's important just to make that, uh, uh, to talk about the punctuation, to make sure that what you're saying comes across as clearly as possible. So I think we can start with these question marks. The first uh, two lines are questions. So it's always important when you have a question in a speech to honestly ask the question, to try to get an answer from it. And typically questions go up in inflection. Not every single time. Obviously, there are times when you might naturally ask a question, somehow it goes down. You know, but typically, if you say, hey, do you want to go out to eat? is different than, hey, do you want to go out to eat? Yeah. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? You know, these things elicit a response. Whereas going, are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Almost kind of shuts <laughs> things down. You know, it, it just feels weird. It's, it's not as clear. Okay. Well, I guess I gave the example, but if you can give the example with, uh, uh, with her speech there, just those first two, the mercy, had you mercy on him, just really make those questions. Mercy? 
Have you mercy on him? See here, you. You have slain my love. Uh -huh. And see what happens is that it, it sets up. You ask the question, and then here comes the response. Yeah. Whereas, do it the wrong way and see what happens. Mercy. Had you mercy on him? See here, you. You have slain my love. Right? It's just, it's kind of the same level. It's just, yeah. it, it can't really rise any higher. It can't really get any more important. You're just dropping information on him instead of creating a moment, you know? Question marks, sure. Now we've got exclamation points. So these typically just indicate energy. And what's kind of fun, and I think happens sometimes in uh, GNS, but it certainly happens a lot in Shakespeare. Sometimes they just appear in the middle of phrases. Sometimes you'd be like, oh, Jeff, you smell great. <laughs> It'll be, oh, Jeff, exclamation point. You smell great. And you're like, yeah, but you smell great is still lower K. That's not a new sense. You know, these, these moments will happen. Uh, so I like to think of exclamation points and everything, not so much as the end of an idea, but more like you are trying to get everyone to understand the importance of what came before it. So right after this, you got the two questions and then see here you, you have slain my love. So if we make sure we've honestly asked these questions and then we stress the importance he has to see, then what follows, I think, is much more clear to understand. So try that out. Mercy? Had you mercy on him? See here, you. You have slain my love. Fantastic. How does that feel? Oh, it it's like stepping on the gas, that exclamation uh -huh. point. It's, uh, it's like giving it extra octane. I love the extra octane. It's just, <laughs> it's a great way to think about it. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you got the gas on, you got the handbrake, you hit the gas, you see you here, exclamation point, let go of the brake, and then you can just take off. Yeah, yeah. yeah it makes, it, it just, it lends itself to, to giving you that energy and that impetus to speak. It's fantastic. So now we got, uh, we don't have any ellipses in this particular speech, but typically you've got dashes and ellipses. And so these things are a little bit different than each other, but sometimes people get a little bit confused. So generally speaking, a dash indicates an interrupting idea. And so usually the way to feel that out if it's a little uncomfortable is to think about there being a change in tempo. Whereas an ellipsis indicates that the idea is audibly incomplete. So there's, it's gonna be a bit of a pause, but it's a pregnant pause. You're still thinking, you're still considering. So if I were to say, uh, I wanted to go to the mall today, you know, but someone said that I can't go and I'm like, oh, but I wanted to go to the mall today. It's still, I'm still thinking it. I'm still expressing the idea, but I've just stopped audibly expressing it. So you're but not I done. Let it's the not, air out of it. <laughs> yeah, it's not blank. It's not waiting. It's not nothing. It's full. But in this case, with the dashes, which we have in the speech, um, we have uh, the first one I have here is that I am an acquired taste dash only the educated palate can appreciate me. Yeah. So I think without any other information about it, without any other context, if we just tried those two phrases, and let's say we do the first one a little bit slower and the second one faster to create that sense of interruption. Let's just see what that feels like. I am an acquired taste. Only the educated palate can appreciate me. Cool, cool. Now let's try it the other way. Let's make I am an acquired taste rapid. You're, you're telling this person and then that thought is interrupted with, well, only the educated palate, slower, even more thoughtful. Let's see what happens. I am an acquired taste. Only the educated palate can appreciate me. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. How does that feel? Oh, it's, it's wonderfully different. Um, and I like the, uh, that dash means she's had another thought. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe not necessarily about what she's going to say, but about the emotion or the um, the uh, thoughts about herself that she would like this person to know. You know, I'm I'm uh, I'm different than you think is kind of what she's saying there. Definitely. Hold on, that's what yeah. that dash says. Hold on, and just having that dash gives so much inspiration to the actor. 
So once we start to put in the beats again, once we start to put in the context, who this person is, uh, Kadisha is saying, I am an acquired taste. Uh, I mean, there's any number of beats we could go with that, but I mean, is that something that she thinks uh, Coco knows? Is that something she's teaching him or is that something she's reminding him? What, what do you think? She's reminding him here? Yeah, Perhaps, she's, yeah. because uh, earlier in the opera, um, she has, uh, she, she has said, look, uh, my face is plain, but then she goes on to explain that any number of her body parts are just, would just knock you out. So um, there, it's a very interesting way of, of, of uh, calling herself uh, attractive or, uh, uh -huh. so it's very, yeah, it's very funny, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, this is, <laughs> this is the part where I think she alludes to that that you need, to, you need to know these things. This is esoteric knowledge that you need in order to approach me in the right sort of way. Right, right. So yeah, she's, she's reminding him. She's, uh, 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 I was gonna say educate him, but she already did that. She already educated him, so she's reminding him. I'm an acquired taste, new beat. Only the educated palate can appreciate me. So, you know, maybe there she's dismissing him. She's calling him stupid. You know, she, be, she's assuming yeah. he's not on board. So like, shut up, go away. So you have a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. So if we try just those two beats separately, I think we, we have, uh, you know, a fun little part there. But when we have that dash, when we're being told to think faster, to this idea is done, whole new idea. And that second idea is so important. We can't wait for the first one to be finished. I think that that uh, motivates the choices that we're making, the beats that we're going to play. So try that out. We'll start with, you know, I'm an acquired taste, she's reminding him, and then bam, right in the middle of that, uh, dismiss him. See what happens. I am an acquired taste. Only the educated palate can appreciate me. Oh, that was fun. How's that feel? <laughs> That's great. She's really she's <laughs> lecturing him. She's really laying it on. You, uh -huh. you plebeian. <laughs> <laughs> she makes me wonder if we try that again, uh, just for the sake of the beat. Then, okay, if it's if it's more of a lecturing, if it's more of a you're you're diminishing in some way, the plebeian of him. You know, you have, you have to speak slower to make sure he understands. <laughs> You know, uh, in that sense, what's a good way to set that up, maybe, you know, uh, if we make the I'm an acquired taste, maybe that's, uh, you're telling him a secret. You're, you're, you're starting with something you think he would understand and then immediately turning around going, you're adult, mommy's talking <laughs> kind of a thing. Yeah, I don't know, try telling him a secret, see if that does it. I am an acquired taste. Only the educated palate can appreciate me. Oh man, yeah, right, right when that happens, that's so much fun. Because <laughs> you just get this like, oh, they're friends. Oh, they're not friends. No. Oh. I think the words that Gilbert left off there were, you moron. <laughs> <laughs> if, she, if she says it that way. I, th I think that there's a lot that can be gained in a lot of speeches by remembering that the character has written but didn't say, you moron. You moron. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So we understand the moment before. We understand uh, these beats. We understand how the punctuation can help us. So let's go through the whole speech. Let's just, we'll play with it. We'll react and uh, we'll see what happens. So some things just to remember to always look for and play the contrasts and play the contradictions. And also we have, we have questions to ask them honestly. And uh, yeah, let's, let's have fun with it. Let's see what happens. Mercy? Had you mercy on him? See here, you, you have slain my love. He did not love me, but he would have loved me in time. I am an acquired taste. Only the educated palate can appreciate me. I was educating his palate when he left me. Well, he is dead. And where shall I find another? It takes years to train a man to love me. Am I to go through the weary round again? And a 
at the same time implore mercy for you who have robbed me of my prey? I mean my pupil. Just as his education was on the point of completion? Oh, where shall I find another? Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> so let's talk about a couple things then. Um, who is your target? Coco for part of the time. Uh -huh. And I think myself and the universe for some of the other uh, points, such as the um, when she says, I am to go through the weary round again. That's kind of in her head. But then she remembers Coco's still there. And, you, and, and, and uh, so I have to do all that. And then you, peon, I have to implore mercy for you. So she, She's interrupted you twice. Yes, yes. So she, she, she keeps coming back and forth uh, to actually talking to him and then going off on her own kind of train of thought. And I think she's just very angry at the universe here for putting her in this position. So it's not just Coco. It's just, this has happened again. She says, do I have to go through the weary round again? <laughs> so that says to me, this has happened before. Uh -huh. Definitely, definitely. So then uh, uh, I liked because it, it, it seemed that you had Coco in one place in the space so you could directly talk to him. And then there was, there was uh, some of the, the focus and gesturing just in other places. Um, so I wondered then, obviously, you know, when we talk sometimes we're going to go around, but we're always going to direct it back at something. So if we put Coco on one side and we put, so to speak, the universe somewhere else, just to, to help focus those ideas. Yeah. And certainly we're going to wander a little bit, but as long as we land on them, I think that'll, <laughs> that'll, and especially because it's on camera. It's a little weird sometimes. I know it is a little weird. I, I have a giant side. poster in my room. Maybe I will just, uh, direct. <laughs> it's a, it's a giant poster of Marvin Hamlish. So he can, oh, he, nice. he, he would, he would definitely make a great cocoa. Yeah, there is a, a particular uh, knot on the wall in my kitchen that, that when I'm learning lines, I talk to all the time. So yeah, sometimes it's good to have you know, a learning buddy, someone to work with like that, like Marvin Hamlish. Yeah, I was trying to, there was, there was a couple of things that popped out, but I'll catch them uh, the next time around. So have at it, have fun. Mercy? Have you mercy on him? See here, you, you have slain my love. He did not love me, but he would have loved me in time. I am an acquired taste. Only the educated palate can appreciate me. I was educating his palate when he left me. Oh, well, he is dead. And where shall I find another? It takes years to train a man to love me. Am I to go through the weary round again and at the same time implore mercy for you who have robbed me of my prey? I mean my pupil. Just at the point his education was on the point of completion? Where shall I find another? So there's uh, this one line you have, uh, uh, I was educating his palate when he left me. Um, and at the moment, just, just uh, uh, it's stressing the pronoun a bit. You're saying I was educating his palate when he left me. Generally speaking, I think for a lot of, of newer actors in particular, uh, they're going to always end up stressing the pronoun. There's gonna be a lot of had you mercy on him, see here, you, you have slain. And oftentimes we want to not go for the pronoun, but go for the verb, go for what the sentence is about, for what is happening to that pronoun. Yeah, actually just, um, just about that, Gilbert often, it's just because we're doing some, uh, a Gilbert and Sullivan monologue here, Gilbert will often put italics or some kind of stress on those pronouns. So it can be sometimes, uh, well, it's very liberating to be able to just kind of not follow those directions sure, and sure. see where the see where the line goes without someone else's stress on there so yeah this will be fun to do i was educating his palate when he left me uh-huh uh-huh try it again stressing all the pronouns you got i his and he so just see what the difference is i was educating his palate when he left me so there is a difference, I think, when, if there's, you know, if, if, if you're doing, uh, I want to say a restoration play, when there's constantly letters being in, in, involved in the plot and things get very confused and you don't know who knows what and who's here and this person did that, 
that sometimes, yeah, you need to be very clear that I was talking to him about this person. There are moments for that clarity. Uh, my shortcut rule is that I'll say, I will stress the pronoun only once in a play. So I need to make sure that wherever I stress it, it's the most important place to stress it because I only get the one try. But the difference here, what was clear who you were talking about, it was difficult to be clear what was happening. Whereas the first time that you were educating his palate when he left, that's the story. So now we're on board, now we're following. Uh, and we see by your actions, how you feel the fact that he left. The other one I want to play with, and, and I'm loving it right now, the employ mercy of you who robbed me of my prey. And then like, there's this like little electrical shock. Like, I mean my pupil. Do you think, uh, cause right now I'm kind of getting the, uh, when you hit, I mean my pupil, almost like you're mad at Coco that you said the wrong words. Sure. Yeah, so that's kind of fun, play, play with that. Uh, you can start with from, am I to go through the weird round again and see what happens. Am I to go through the weary round again? And at the same time, implore mercy for you who robbed me of my prey? I mean my pupil. Just at the point his education was on the point of completion. <laughs> See, that, that time was funny. It almost felt like an apology, actually. But that was, that was great, nonetheless. It was like, <laughs> I'm going to crush you. Ah, rat. Mm. But anyway, and so that's anyway. fine. Um, <laughs> what I'm just curious about when I read this, and I realize this a dash, I realize that it is telling you to have an interrupting thought. But I wonder if it would still be funny if it's basically played straight, if there is no stress, no pause, nothing. Just go right through, pray to right people. Right through without the dashes. Okay. Yeah, just to see what happens. Am I to go through the weary round again and at the same time implore mercy for you who have robbed me of my prey, I mean my pupil, just at the point his education was on the point of completion? That was close. That was close. Okay. Uh, uh, same kind of stress on prey and pupil. There's, there's no uh, correction at all. They're both matter of fact. My prey, okay. I mean my pupil. So just see what happens. Okay. Am I to go through the weary round again and at the same time implore mercy for you who robbed me of my prey, I mean my pupil, just at the point his education was on the point of completion? <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I, I mean, funny. <laughs> it's, it's like a, a, a more traditional joke, I guess. It's a more like, like the straight man kind of a joke of just like, here's this thing. Oops, I said the wrong thing out loud. And I'm going to keep going as if like you're trying to like cover yeah. it up. I don't know if that necessarily works with the Katashaw, but it's just, it's just well, it's kind of like she's saying, ah, semantics, whatever, you know, yeah. she just, she doesn't, it doesn't really matter to her, but she just wants to be clear. So that's why she says, <laughs> there's really no, fun. there's no judgment of herself in it. Yeah. 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 She's, she's not judging herself anymore. No, she's laying in the coat. Of course not. It's not all makes gotta go through the weird round. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Let's try the whole thing one more time. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, for, for the sake of, of the exercise, we're paying attention to the punctuation, we're paying attention to uh, uh, playing the verbs over the pronouns, and uh, let's just see where it leads. Mercy, had you mercy on him? See here, you, you have slain my love. He did not love me, but he would have loved me in time. I am an acquired taste. It takes, I am an acquired taste. Only the educated palate can appreciate me. I was educating his palate when he left me. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm having, I'm having a That's tough okay. time adjusting that rhythm, but it, it will, okay. but it's a very interesting exercise. Definitely, um, definitely. As a, as a like thought experiment. And it would take me, it would probably take me a little bit longer to get this uh, exactly right. Mercy, had you mercy on him? See here, you, you have slain my love. He did not love me, but he would have loved me in time. I am an acquired taste. Only the educated palate can appreciate me. 
I was educating his palate when he left me. Well, he is dead. And where shall I find another? It takes years to train a man to love me. Am I to go through the weary round again, and at the same time implore mercy for you who have robbed me of my prey? I mean my pupil, just at the point his education was on the point of completion. Oh, where shall I find another? That was great. That was great. That actually, uh, that, that pointed something out to me that I hadn't noticed until now, strangely enough. Uh, I might have go through the weird round again, and at the same time, if we can stress, implore mercy for you. It's that connection all of a sudden. Yeah. Mercy, you would have had mercy for him, and now you want mercy? mercy? Like Mercy? Yeah. Yeah, it's that this fun. This is the part of, where she's sticking it to him. Absolutely, it's 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 the fun that that the more you go through uh, a text, the more you go through a speech, the more alive it comes, the more things you notice, and the more it shifts. So it's never finished. It's never there. That's the way to do it, and we're done. It's always right. something's becoming more important, and when that does, oh, that really brings this part out. So to start from, we might go through the weird round again, and make sure we hit mercy. Mercy is the most important we're part there. Am I to go through the weary round again and at the same time implore mercy for you who robbed me of my prey? I mean my pupil. Just at the point his education was on the point of completion. Oh, where shall I find another? And then that works so well because it gets so serious. The mercy, it's, 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 it's uh, Shakespearean. It's, it's uh, the Merchant of Venice at that point. You know, uh, uh, the quality of mercy is not strained. Yeah. <laughs> and then my prey, I mean my pupil. And then I it's mean, a joke. Like, ah. so <laughs> that dichotomy of energy, it gets so serious that we get a bigger release uh, at the joke. <laughs> and, and, oh, it's fantastic. That works so well. So the last thing I want to talk about, and, and I purposely saved it for last, is when we talk about emotions, um, and I think that there are certainly some different viewpoints when it comes to what you should be feeling as an actor and whatnot. Um, as we talked about before, uh, dealing with practical aesthetics, and, and uh, th that's more the direction I like to go with, uh, with the whole invent nothing, deny nothing, that includes your emotions. So we know what these beats are. We know, okay, when I get here, it's really strong if I intimidate this person or, or if I uh, educate or corner them, I think was a good one that we use. We can corner if we're happy. We can corner if we're sad. We can corner if we're sleepy, hungry, tired, anything. Well, sleepy and tired are probably close to the same thing. But it doesn't matter how we're feeling. We can honestly come in and perform these actions without necessarily having to have the, the color of emotion on top of it. And in fact, oftentimes, honestly doing these things will make us feel. Yeah, it generates emotion the emotion. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and what I enjoyed, especially at the beginning, the first couple of times we were just playing with beats was that they were clear, they were honest, they were great, and it didn't require, there wasn't a big summing up of energy, there wasn't a big, oh, I gotta find the right place to be in. If that's what works for you, that's perfectly fine. But I'm saying that it doesn't, necessarily require no point where we're saying how can we make you feel sadder or how can we make yeah. you feel angrier all you had to do was play the actions and the rest fell in line yeah i think you're i think you're right um if you put that the energy of the speech behind it the emotion will find will find it so it's kind of a it's kind of like two magnets you know mm -hmm. they're, they're they want they want to come together those two things and, Definitely. and and they will if you just speak it honestly and i think it's easier to demonstrate to an audience playing actions as opposed to conjuring emotions because everyone's going to feel differently about that and uh what may be a great trigger for one person might be a dead end for somebody else but right. honestly doing a thing honestly i need to corner this person we can all do that. We're, we're human beings, so it's, it's, it's possible. And it's exciting to watch. So, uh, to conclude, the joy of acting is when a performance is alive and is present and has the possibility to go anywhere. And in this way, performance, as we said before, it can be repeated, but it's never the same way twice. So, Sally, thank you so much 
for everything. Thank you for partnering with me this and, and you've done an excellent job. I'm really excited. Thank you so much. This was a great pleasure and I had a ton of fun. So oh. hopefully, hopefully everyone else will have fun exploring texts for themselves. I hope so. And uh, uh, as, this, as this moves forward, I hope we can see you again. Absolutely. I'd love to. Great. So my name is Sean Lenhart. This has been Savoyards Teach. If you like what you saw, please leave a comment. We're working hard to provide more classes and content for you, and we need your feedback. And we want to know what it is that you want to learn. So please reach out, write something, you know, send us a tweet, send us a Facebook thing, anything that you want saying, hey, I like this. Are you guys going to do dancing for circus bears? You know, whatever it is, uh, let us know. We're definitely excited to see that. So thank you very much and have a pleasant day.